Bullshit. It's the No BS Marketing Show. I'm Dave Mastovich, CEO of Mass Solutions, the world's only No BS marketing firm. You know how things sometimes seemingly unrelated happen that afterwards feel like they're actually tied together for some other totally different reason? Well, that's what happened with me the past week or so. Loyal No BSers caught my recap and lessons learned from Pittsburgh Steelers coach Mike Tomlin's press conference. I summarized six ways to better communicate that can help Mike Tomlin and you do a better job when you are in a situation and you have to get your ideas out to an audience. Well, then two separate times, I heard two separate people that I've mentored over the years use a phrase that's helped me to lead and helped me with personal and professional growth, which ironically came from another Steelers coach. When I was 13 years old, I read a book about the Super Bowl Steelers of the 70s and Chuck Knoll's leadership approach. And there's a phrase that Chuck Knoll used when he was rebuilding or building this pathetic uh, team, turning this pathetic team into a dynasty. And Chuck Knoll, at the core, was a teacher, a leader and teacher. And I like to think that's how I am too because I really enjoy explaining ideas and concepts and mentoring and coaching throughout my life. And Chuck Knoll had this way about him and this phrase that he would use. When somebody made a mistake, instead of yelling and screaming, he would actually ask, what was your thought process on that play? What was your thought process when you did that? It made an impact on me as a young guy and I thought, I'm going to try to use that. Then I was blessed that after, during my college years, I was able to jump in and do a ton of different things. And I always tell listeners that are in their teens and 20s and even 30s, continue to try things that you're passionate about and work at those and give them a a good run and see what you can learn from them. And I did a whole bunch of things. I was an on-air person at multiple radio stations. I did sports writing and on TV and radio while a teenager and 20-something, I had my own DJing business, and I loved sports and played a lot of sports and always thought I'd coach. So I was blessed that my first job, I was able to lead at two radio stations in a top position trying to do a turnaround. But I also had the time and the flexibility being a young person to also become a coach. And I was able to become a basketball coach at a very young age and influence uh, teens and, and so forth. And I thought, I'm going to apply this Chuck Knoll thing. And I was fortunate to have teams over the years that were spectacular. And and when you have an AAU program, you're able to keep teams together for 8, 10 years. Well, not most AAU programs, but if you run AAU in that way where you're really trying to have relationships and teach about life, you keep people together for years. So I've coached all these teams, and tons of former players (laughs) would probably remember this phrase when – They would do something that didn't seem to make sense to me, and I'd call them over and say, what was your thought process on that? And at first, people still get defensive because they think you are being critical, but if you are able to use this phrase from the great Chuck Knoll, you will be surprised how it helps you in your personal and professional life and helps those you're working with. Because when you ask what's your thought process, here's something really important to remember. Nobody sits out and says, I'm going to be an ass today. I shouldn't say nobody. But the vast majority of us don't say, I'm going to go do something wrong right now. I'm going to really go and see if I can screw this up. I don't think many humans do that. Most people did what they thought worked at that time. Now, maybe they don't have the expertise. Maybe they don't have the education. Maybe they don't have the experience. Maybe they don't have the intelligence. So they did something that was unwise. But they most of the time didn't intentionally go out and screw something up. So when you say, what was your thought process on that? In a basketball sense, it would kind of be a person maybe forced a driver or a shot and say, what was your thought process on that? That player would be forced then to say, well, I thought I saw that I could do X. And then I could come back and say, okay, but when that first happened, had you tried this, you might have been able to do Y. So now you're teaching and showing that person. So when that happens again, and it will, they now have another tool, another in their arsenal so it applies to sports quite easily but it's not 
common because in sports it's a high intense move at a fast pace and, and I don't want to imply that I don't get loud when I'm coaching because I do but I'm teaching even in a championship game I'm teaching and that impacts those players well as a leader as a young leader doing the turnaround of two radio stations now imagine this I'm maybe 21 22 years old and I can remember leading a lot of people in their 40s and 50s and I had to gain their respect and I had to do it in the best way I could and I was just like every other human being and that I was insecure and I wasn't completely confident but what I tried to apply was this line I would often ask what was your thought process on that and when you ask what was your thought process as a leader you learn because again that person didn't set out to tick you off that person didn't set out to lose the company money that person didn't set out to make what you believe was a mistake so they're getting, they're telling you their thought process so you're learning how they are wired and you're learning how they think so you're now able to lead them and coach them and mentor and manage them based on the way they're thinking and wired the second thing is they're able to learn and not everyone is good at growth not everyone is good at learning and, and change but just about everyone appreciates that you're trying to see their side of it the people that you really want to keep around you long term and give more responsibility to are the people that want to learn and grow so they hear from you when you say okay your thought process I kind of get it but have you ever thought about it this way hmm and maybe you could do that they begin to start listening to you so as a leader I get really excited when I see this and I had two instances in the last week with two different people who I watched them say to someone well what was your thought process and in both instances the person they said it to first was taken aback and then both of the people that I've ha had been fortunate to know and coach and work with and they've taught me things too they both said now I'm not being critical I, I, I want to understand and then the guard came down a little bit and I watched those people they were talking to explain their rationale and I watched some growth happening because everybody understood where each other came from and then how uh, one of the funniest ones is that uh, one of my players that I've coached recently actually said this to others on the team during a time out uh, last year and um, you know that's when you think okay I'm making an impact because you're hearing and seeing people able to do that and that's from Chuck Noll who made impact on people who then made impact on other people like Tony Dungy is part of Chuck Noll's tree and all the people that Tony Dungy mentored and coached so it's great because that's what a big part of life is is giving back and teaching others and and seeing them grow and so on my episode is that a couple of things happened three different things happened that were separate but then tied together I wanted to do that podcast about Mike Tomlin's press conference because I felt I had something to say about six ways that we could all communicate better and then right after that I have these two instances where people that I've had the opportunity to work with and coach use that phrase that Chuck Knoll taught me who happens to be another Steelers coach and they don't have a lot of them they've only had three in 50 years and so I thought I'd bring that to you and again it's asking what was your thought process on that and then pausing and if the person looks a little bit nervous coming back and saying I'm not being critical I want to learn what your thought process was so we can work together and see if we can both get better at this by asking that what was your thought process you change the dynamic you learn because again as I said people don't set out to be lousy people don't set out to make mistakes people don't set out to do things that you thought was unwise and then that person can learn because they're talking through with you and you have an opportunity to explain to them the ways that they could have approached that differently because there are multiple ways to approach each situation that's the no BS leadership and coaching tip from today's episode of the no bullshit marketing show Remember, we appreciate your reviews online. Let us know what you like and don't like and how we can get better. It's helped us a lot over our uh, three years of doing this, three plus years, three and a half years almost. So do that. Go online and give us a review. Also, 
Go to MassSolutions.biz if you haven't signed up for our Week in Review No BS Marketing Fix that comes out once a week. It's quick, easy to read, can help you and gives you an online something to forward and share. Share and like our stuff on social media. LinkedIn's my favorite place to push out the No BS stuff. And remember, ask yourself, what's the big idea? And build your story around the answer. It's all about bold solutions, no BS. And our podcast is recorded from the No BS Marketing Studio right in downtown, beautiful, bold Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania.